Hello and welcome to episode 54 of the In General Podcast. My name's Jack and I'm joined with Chris. Hey buddy. Hey, how's it going? Good man, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I was pretty tired today. Did not know we were recording a podcast. Everything worked out though, so all, all, was, <laughs> all was wonderful. Um, well, okay, so I'll introduce the guy who did know we were recording a podcast. <laughs> hey Alex. Hi, uh, good evening. How you doing, man? Yeah, it is good evening, man. I am tired. I'll tell yeah, you that. it's like late here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've been working all day, you and I. Mm. Chris, Chris, what, have you been, <laughs> you've been? You've been chilling all day, waiting for the podcast that you didn't know was happening? You know, just been kicking it back. No, um, I'm home now. It's like, literally, it's this, tough life. This, this worked out perfectly. Thug life. So, let's talk about something very exciting. I, I think something way more exciting than Jurassic World 2, something way more exciting than new Jurassic World products, new Jurassic Park products. That's the Lost World Jurassic Park. That movie has turned 20 as of yesterday, the 23rd of May. That's 23rd of May. <laughs> yes, not the 19th. Just in case uh, not the 19th. It, wrong. <laughs> it released me talk about that. the 23rd. So you got, Universal got the date wrong. It's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? Like, So was the 19th like the premiere? Hashtag Jurassic Park 2, <laughs> I think, says it all. Um, so when you Google Lost World release date, it inevitably comes up. It auto-generates the first date that's on the IMDb. So the IMDb listing is the 19th, which is the premiere date in the USA, so the, the premiere for the cast and crew. That's not the release date. Yeah. The release date of a movie is when it releases in theatres, right? So <laughs> yeah. ov- obviously Universal just made the textbook error of Googling it. At the start of the month, when I started the promotion on an Instagram and social media for... Lost World, I did the same, I googled and I was like, 19th doesn't sound right so I started googling it and I started researching it and I was like, no, it's Memorial Day in 97 which was the 23rd, and then I saw all the other dates on IMDb and I was like, yeah, it's the 23rd come on. Yeah, I I don't don't... know why IMDb lists it that way it's really confusing and not at all like representative of when the movie actually released in like for audiences. Well, I think it's more the way, because Google clearly uses IMDb as sort of a or even Wikipedia for a, for a source of that, but they always put the premiere date first because obviously it's the earlier date. Um, so you know, you got Google to blame for that, but fans know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Universal didn't know, but fans know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even the uh, Jurassic Park multiple calendar says twenty third. Yeah. <laughs> no. I saw you. Uh, that was posted... printed before January. <laughs> yes, I saw you posted pictures of uh, that date on the. Uh... Not the Snapchat story, the um, Instagram story. Yeah, I sort of, you know, I sort of uh, bookended the day with it. I, I started the day with the 23rd and I ended the day with the 23rd. Mm-hmm. Just to clarify that the 23rd is indeed the release date of The Lost World. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about how exciting this is. So, I mean, 20 years ago. Did any I, I of think you the guys first see thing in that... the theaters? No, no, I was never. four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, what, six? Um, I saw in the theaters. Um, it's we're going to have words vague. with your parents. It's, it's a very yeah. Vague, you were six. Yeah, it was a very <laughs> vague memory. I think I went with like my mom. And did I, she take you to skate? <laughs> or, or did she I, take I you because you liked her, the first one? Yeah, because I had the first one on VHS and watched it all the time. Um, and I, had I bet about halfway time. through she was uh, freaking out. No, I loved it. I remember. I came Not out you, and her. Like, what have I done? Why did I bring him here? <laughs> that man just um, got ripped in half. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I came out and I was trying to imitate the sound of the T-Rex and I think I just sounded a lot more like a cow um, <laughs> especially with a with a pre what a six year old kid voice man. <laughs> 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 it's super high pitch I, um, like, I, don't, I don't know I really don't know but um yeah that's really cool that you got to see it in the cinema though mm. yeah it, it I don't think that I mean obviously it wasn't the first movie I've ever seen in the theater but it is the first movie that I actually have like an active memory of um, <laughs> your mom had been taking you to see horrors years <laughs> oh yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no 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 I mean I remember seeing that in theaters and it was just a really really cool experience um it just you know it blew my mind yeah I, I think um, you've been posting a couple of GIFs, or yes. as they are supposedly pronounced, GIFs, although I don't believe that, and I will never call it that, it's a GIF, uh, on your Twitter about just the raptors in the, you know, in the yeah. night. The VFX to this day still holds up, some, mm. in some cases more than Jurassic Park. Totally. And, and it's so, I don't know, it's incredible. It comes just, down I mean, obviously, 
to the animation as well. Like not only just the rendering and the lighting and everything like that, but the way the animals animated, the way they emoted, the way they acted. It really how smooth are they when the they in that scene you posted oh with God. the. Uh, it, with the raptors jump, they jump on the jeep and then they run towards it. But it's like they, it's like if you told people that so was a clip of Jurassic World two, they would believe it. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that, that, it looks like oh yeah, there's a clear enhancement over Jurassic World there. I mean, if you get closer to the raptors in the CG, then it starts to show a little bit more. But like at the like right at that distance, it looks better than anything in Jurassic World. Oh, most definitely. Mm. I think I think every uh, mo- yeah. I mean, Jurassic World, World, you can look at it individually, and you can be like, okay, if you really like look at the close up shots, you see, oh wow, there's so much more model detail, there's so much more texture detail, etc. But it doesn't look more believable. Um, yeah, it's the compositing and the rendering of yeah. it, and, and obviously the lighting as well plays a huge factor. And I think animation, what I really Jurassic think World seemed to miss out was the was the kind of nighttime rain shadows kind of yeah. thing. Everything was bright, but then I you got to think. There was some scenes in the first two movies and Jurassic Three in the sun. Mm-hmm. Think of the Stegosaurus was, scene in the Lost yeah. World. A lot of sun, a lot of bright scenes, but that it's is it so looks good. Given their, their looks textures good. aren't as strong as they could be. Um, hmm. That is like the no, one thing. But that, it's ninety-seven. Yes, I, I will say that twenty like, years yeah, ago, <laughs> the roundup scene, the Lost World roundup scene. I mean, oh, that's the whole how, sequence it's out in the sun. It's saturated. Like, you know, it's, you're getting like that harsh sunlight coming down and everything, and everything mm. looks fantastic. I'm thinking of like yeah. when that Pachycephalosaur comes in and just on the vehicle, like, dude. Oh, that's so it looks good. so good. Yeah. And then it transitions to the animatronic, and everything looks fantastic there. Um, no, I mean I think so one of the things d- that helps is also the animation. They, you know, they studied the anatomy of the animals and went for keyframe renders um, rather than motion capture. And I think going to motion capture for human beings, motion capture. I mean, they have such a completely different. Anatomy I, and or even animals. If you're motion capturing like a uh, like a rhinoceros, I mean their hip placement is different than a, a stegosaurus or a. Uh, well, hey, so it, they even used uh, keyframes in the new King Kong yes. in Skull Island. You know what's interesting is they they did motion capture for Kong Skull Island, and then the director was looking at it and said, "Oh, you know what? Let's just go. Let's try keyframing some of these scenes." And then he saw the keyframes like, "No, no, no. This looks better. The motion capture yeah. wasn't working." And so I do kind of hope that Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think maybe there's something to be learned from animal motion capture, but I, I think that keyframe is really the way to go. And I think when you're doing the keyframes, you need to understand the anatomy and the skeleton stru- you know, the skeletal structures of these animals that actually existed. No, most definitely. Mm-hmm. I agree with you there. But um, okay, so let's let's continue talking about Lost, Lost World. World. <laughs> I gotta ask, as far as uh, the whole franchise goes, but out of Lost World, uh, what's your favorite scene in that movie? One scene. <sighs> That's a toughie. Yeah, um, <laughs> the silence. Yeah, dead silence. Go, I mean, Alex, I think, Alex, go on. What's your favourite scene? That's tricky, man. I think it's either got to be the trailers on the cliff or the village, okay. maybe. Ooh. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Maybe the long grass. I was about to say like, the, <laughs> the one-two punch of the long grass and then the village. Um, especially the first half of like the workers' village, like when the raptors start attacking in the workers' village. Mm. Like, that That is just... Such a fantastic sequence. Yeah, it's so tense. Yeah, I mean and when the that music battle is so, oh, so moody. Back. And... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My lucky pack. <laughs> <laughs> but, Your lucky pack. Uh, and then, like, it has some good funny sequences, like where uh, Ian accidentally rips the door off, and just like a lot of sequences <laughs> like that. Like, there's a lot of fun in it. Yeah, but it's scary, intense. Like, the fun is more of like not humor necessarily, but situational humor. Like, th- a little... It just... I don't know. It's very well-directed, well-orchestrated, well-composed. It's curious, because it's so scary as well. Like, I can remember watching it when... I can't remember when, but having nightmares just about the raptors in the Lost World, even more so than I did with Jurassic Park. And I think it's because they're so sort of feral, and, like, there's no control to Feral's them. Feral's a good word. Yeah. yeah. They- there's no control. There's no fences. Mm. There's nothing on this island. They've been living there for four-plus years, mm. completely on their own. Uh, I think that's what's so scary about it. The first one, it was all in fences. Yeah. And they were all, you know, they kind of, they the humans were in charge to start with, at least. Whereas in this one, they were going into territory, unknown territory. Mm. And that's what's so cool about the movie. And uh, yeah, there was that article I posted uh, yesterday, which was, it, you know, the article title was, Is the Lost World Better Than Jurassic Park? I mean, obviously it's not. 
But, but <laughs> in my opinion, it's as good as I, I love them both equally. I, I don't. Um, I love them both equally. Like I don't think it's as good as Jurassic Park, but I do enjoy it mm-hmm. almost as much as Jurassic Park. Like like one hundred percent. Like if I talk about the movie that like really is a better movie, like I don't even need to go too nitty gritty about it. Like Jurassic Park, even like in my heart, feels like a better movie. But in terms of pure enjoyment, just watching them on screen, I enjoy The Lost World just as much. Mm, yeah. Um, and Even the, I mean, down to characters as well. There's such a array of characters in the film. Oh my god! Like um, Roland, dude. Yeah. Roland is one of the best characters in the franchise, hands down. Yeah, absolutely. He, he is. He is such a motherfucker in this movie. <laughs> I love him. But he's got. A, he's got heart. You know. He's got. He realizes it's so wrong. Yeah. No. Absolutely. He definitely has. It's a difficult one. He, yeah. He. He's a. Um. He's a realistically flawed character. Like he kind of comes off as like a little bit of the villain at first but as you get to learn mm. a lot more about him you realize that he's a, a really smart individual uh, a stand up guy he has his he has his set of set of morals and he kind of eventually kind of like as things unfold around him i think that he gets a clearer picture of like what he's been part of and i think that it sort of does change him i think he does grow and evolve a little bit you know he is that sort of trophy hunter that maybe finally saw it from an outsider's perspective and kind of changed as it all happened. And then we can talk about Malcolm, because he's so good in this movie. He um, Malcolm's character, we've talked about this in a previous podcast, the change of his character from the first film to the second one is so perfect and something that was I, executed so well I by Spielberg. I don't fully agree I mean, I like him in The Lost World but I like him more in Jurassic Park and I wish Lost World Malcolm was more like Jurassic Park Malcolm, but I do understand. Yeah, why he's but then a we dis- yeah, we discussed this though. I-, I don't think it's a case of preferring one or the other because I think they're both so unique. Uh, but he changed. I-, I think again, it's a very realistic change after what happened in the movie, nearly dying mm. from something that it's so unimaginable. You know, bringing back something so prehistoric in its own is ridiculous. But then being thrown up as a liar, uh, being banded around as as a crazy person. Was he, was he stripped of his um, of his uh, tenure? PhDs? Um, yeah. Tenure. He, As I recall, you had your tenure revoked for selling wild accusations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. So imagine that. Imagine your whole career, your whole life mm. is pulled away from under you. To be and fair, you I don't no think money. he acts like somebody and... like that. I think he just acts more like a caring dad and boyfriend. Like he just he acts more like a normal. No, but dude. it's but it's more about how his persona comes across. In the first one, he's eccentric and crazy, and in this one, he's he's just lost all that, and for good reason. You know what I mean? I th- there's so much evidence behind that. Mm. I, I, I guess I, I think that stands up as as, as great character development. In my opinion, it, it's so. It makes so much sense. I'm not sure if that's really what changed him as much as the fact that you have a guy who was could be he could be cocky because he was only there for himself in Jurassic Park. But you know, suddenly the people that he cares about are in the mix, so he doesn't really have the uh, luxury of being the crazy chaotician. Like he just needs to get his, especially his daughter, off that mm. island, and he needs to protect her. And I think that he's being a you know a loving, caring parent put in it just an insane position. And I, I think... Yeah, I but think even that, before he gets on the island, I'm just saying his character well, is a completely different character, they, and that shows... I don't know if, It shows the effects that he has had on him I since think the first... you play. are enjoying what most people dislike about The Lost World. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of interesting, because he is very much a different character, and I'm not sure if those change in, changes in his life really sell that to me, but I can tolerate it because we're seeing Malcolm, you know, even immediately, we're seeing Malcolm on his free time. You know, he's going to somebody that he knows. I think that Malcolm, I don't know, I still think there should have been a little bit more elements of zany, weird, eccentric, chaotician Malcolm. But I really do enjoy a lot of him in The Lost World. But it also goes to the book. He's a completely different character in the book as well. Um, yeah. And it, does, and it does not feel as natural in the book. Um he doesn't have as many personal things at stake in the book, in my opinion. I think that in the movie, it sort of feels a little bit more natural than it does in the book. The Lost World probably might... I really enjoy a lot of the sequences in the uh, the novel, but I do think it's one of Michael Crichton's weaker novels. Well, he was kind of forced into writing mm. the sequel. I mean, he he likely had his own ideas, but Spielberg was quite... Persuasive. Because we want to do a movie, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, it may not be his strongest work. I love the novel though. I, I love I do, how it ends. When I rewrote it, re- reread it. <laughs> rewrote it. <laughs> when I rewrote the Lost World, oh um, no! When I reread the Lost World, I was actually kind of struck of how weak the writing was. I've actually not read it, but I've heard that a few times. Like it just sort of drifts around here and there, which is such a shame. But there's a lot. I, of I great need to. I need to read it, it again because the first time, the first time you read it, obviously you don't really. You kind of just enjoy it, especially because it's Jurassic mm. Park. You know what I mean? <laughs> you kind of love every aspect of it. I'll read it again. Yeah, just a few see. months ago, I read Jurassic Park. I just remember Park loving it. And, but it's a lot different uh, to the and, film, and isn't it? Lost World back to back. And like, yeah, the oh, it's writing. unbelievably different. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, the two. It's, it's, yeah, they are not the same. <laughs> the, the only the, the trailer sequences, I mean, they're there. It's there in the book. Uh, there's a number of other sequences that are there, but there's so much that isn't. It's mm. like they... uh, characters are different. The way things unfold is different. The ending is different. I love the ending of the book, though. Yeah, and like you know, with the whole kind of the DX and, and kind yeah, of how God, it's yeah. all that is so. That's where the franchise should have gone. And like the novel, it has like it has the high hide, but the whole set piece, the whole sequence, the whole chain of events are so different. I mean, Dotson's back. He's mm. got a crew. Of yeah, people, yeah, you know. that's right. Yeah, that's right. It's a, it's a really cool novel, but the film the film is twenty years old, uh, and there's some amazing sequences in it. I just chucked a few screenshots together, and you know what? For 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 what it's worth, I enjoy the San Diego sequence. I do. Um, it, I love it, it. Obviously, does feel a little bit slopped on, you know, slapped on last minute. Um, I think if I've I've said this from the beginning of when we started doing the in general podcast, or sorry, the Jurassic World at all podcast, if they didn't have the San Diego scene, people would have been complaining that the dinosaurs hadn't reached. I, you the know, mm-hmm. I don't understand the hate for that scene. It never like it was. It never felt like dinosaurs in the mainland like type of deal. It's not like the dinosaur lived in like the woods and like migrated to the city. I mean, <laughs> it literally got crash landed into the heart of a city. What's going to happen? It's going to run around, and you're not going to have like I mean. It, for realistically speaking, nobody knew engine was keeping it under wraps, and once the engine operation containing it fell apart, there was nobody there to contain it. The entire sequence is, was believable to me. Uh, yeah, and it's only it. one yeah. dinosaur. That's what's so cool about it because yeah. they could try and pass it off as no, everybody that saw it is crazy, and because it's a, you got to think it's a small number. Of, well, I mean, it's a large number of people that saw it, but it's not the whole state of them, uh, the whole country mm. that saw it. You know what I mean? Uh, there's no iPhones back then. Sure, but there are so, still there are still cameras and video. No, of course, and... but I'm saying this is the kind of thing that back then it would have been easier to them to be like, no, 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 it's a myth. You know, it never happened. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. I still to this day would love to see in a sequel some some found footage from the San Diego incident, like in a newsreel or something like that. Ab- absolutely. Uh, yeah. No. I mean, I think that would be really really cool. Uh, as well as honestly, I would like to see some like. Dude, you know park guests in Jurassic World were filming when shit mm. went down, and like I would just love to see like people just sitting there, just like getting torn apart by Pteranodons and Dinorphodons, oh. like a found footage like style, like as the newscast was going on. Like, if they don't do that, it's a wasted opportunity. <laughs> and just you know, there goes, there goes, you know, the little kid visiting the park, just swallowed up by the Pteranodon <laughs> as it flies away, like it, like just horrible. Um, but you know that that's on tape. That, or realistically speaking, it would be on tape. And it'd be the perfect mm. way to do viral marketing for Jurassic World uh, Two, is kind of pick up with like the aftermath, the of disaster, Jur- yeah, the yeah, aftermath the of disaster Jurassic World, happened. treat it like a real event, and then yeah. kind of explore the uh, the evidence. Oh man, I want that now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, there's a there's a lot there. It could be a lot of fun. But I, I agree. San Diego sequence. I would love to see just even like if there's like a security camera tape of just yeah. like a T Rex like walking by. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, that would be so cool. I just there's so much. There's so many cool bits in it. Like uh, when it twists the la- the uh, yeah the traffic light and when you know it, I'm just when looking it smashes into the bus. I love that. I love that bit. The, the screenshots, Jack, you put up in the uh, the article. Every single one of those is gorgeous in its own right. Particularly the one with the traffic light, the CG on the Rex with the the fog and everything. It looks so good. Yeah, man. I remember, and it because it's so out of place. But obviously, it, I mean, as in the, the whole idea of a massive prehistoric beast standing in a street. Yeah, it's so out of place. But it looks so real. Even the light on. On the Rex's mouth from the yeah, traffic light. Like, that, that's, that's the, what it it's really the kind comes of finer down. details. Is you yeah. can tell like like if you look at it, you can tell the textures aren't there as much as like a modern film would be. But I, for some reason, there's something about the way they lit stuff in this era of CG. 
that mm. everything came off a lot more believable. Just like the areas, like the highlights, the midtones, and everything like that, everything looked a lot more realistic to me. And I think it's now, it's like, oh, we don't have to put it out of focus. It can all be in crystal clear detail. But the problem is, is like, look at the cars in the backdrop that are sort of in the same area. They have the same level of low detail. And I think that mm. there's this instinct now that they can show all that texture and model detail, so keep it rendered and let, 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 let the audience see it. And I think your eyes immediately pick up this over-detailed creation sitting in front of you. You know, mix that with the animation. Yeah, they've lost it for sure, because that, like Alex said, that shot in it alone is so fantastic. I, think I mean, you, I could, I could believe that off. that was a, a large, oversized animatronic. You could. I mean, yeah. from, the, from the legs in up, it could frame. be. still frame, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I love as well... Um, just the cinematography in this movie the cinematography in this movie is is it it's just amazing this is the first time uh, yeah you Kaminsky and Spielberg have worked together so he said um I found a quote so Kaminsky was saying uh, the money was already made on the first one so people more, were more relaxed uh it was a scary movie so we could go slightly more darker uh more like a genre movie mm. closer to a horror but not too dark and then Kaminsky goes on to credit uh, Dennis Murin at Special Effects. Uh, sorry, uh, the uh, uh, ILM, ILM. Yeah. for allowing him to backlight dinosaurs. Instead, he encouraged him to uh, shoot into the sun uh, or introduce the dinosaurs as silhouettes. You take um, that camera and you point it at the sun, boy. Yeah, point it at the sun. Uh, because it, as well, it was still, you know, it was the early days of CGI. So it was all about um, trying to achieve mm. the best image you could. So he said, you know, silhouettes or as a strong backlight and it works it yeah really does. the movie is fantastic it's so good it, um and then uh, kaminsky just goes on to say that the lost world was a big departure for me because i've never done a cgi movie before uh not that it's an all cgi movie but at 150 or 200 cgi shots mm. um you know and then he said he said which then was humongous now it's just a normal movie yeah <laughs> shows how the industry has gone but um yeah, yeah, the yeah. It's changed so much. I mean, like romantic comedies probably have that much like CG. <laughs> CG. Um, Make you know, her you boobs know, bigger. You know what's interesting is Kaminsky's recent work hasn't looked good, but his like old work was beautiful. Well, I mean, everything he does still with Spielberg looks good. Really, I mean, like War Horse or or um, the BFG. War Horse as a film was bland. Was um, BFG also? B BFG was was a kids movie but even that I couldn't even make it through that Bridge of Spice had some nice cinematography but nothing groundbreaking I think but it was you know it's perfect you know Catch Me If You Can uh, he also did, he did that? Uh, uh, yeah yes yeah. he did I think he's pretty had... much done every Spielberg up until yeah, and Crystal Skull also looked really bad like I did not like the way he started mm. doing really heavy backlighting and everything looked like it was green screened and it's yeah I didn't I really set. thought Crystal Skull was like the start of modern Kaminsky where like his stuff started looking very fake War Horse had the same issue mm. and uh, so does uh, yeah BFG. I mean Re Ready Player One will be interesting but uh, yeah I mean, it started going digital didn't they but funny funny people he uh, was a cinematographer on that which actually isn't a funny movie it's quite sad. Um, but I, that really surprised me that he was the cinematographer for a Judd Apatow film. You know what's film. also quite sad yeah. is this uh, Skype call conversation connection. <laughs> the com the connection is um, about... Dum, dum, Do it, Alex. Dum, 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 dum. I think, Jack, you always you always go to um, Malcolm's Journey, don't you, as the as the like the pinnacle of the score. You um, anytime like when we watched it in Philly, as soon as Malcolm's Journey kicked in. That like for you has always been the, the sort of the how you know the the, the the pinnacle of the score like what where it really shows its colours and its flavours. Malcolm's journey is the best track. There it is. That's, that's what I want you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was really hard to get you to say that. Yeah, no, I'm I'm there with you though. Mm. Malcolm's journey. I listen to if I want some if I want to feel the lost word. If I want to take some serious music from John Williams I listen to mm. uh, Journey Malcolm's Journey <laughs> I listen to Journey <laughs> <laughs> I listen to some Journey <laughs> um, but yeah it's, um, it's such no, a... Malcolm's Journey is a fantastic mm. piece and I love the I love what is so different about the mm. score as well they went so jungle with it they went so <laughs> tribal <laughs> and, and it's, it means so much to the movie oh yeah I think 
Mm. The soundtrack is one of the major, like a very underrated soundtrack of John Williams. And I've, something really, really interesting I read about this, and I'm, I mean, I might be wrong, I'm sure, but I'm sure it was Lost World. This is the first film, and this is considering that he went so jungly and so sort of natural with it, the first film where he used solely a synthesized choir. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Which is so the, like the other way with it. But when if you listen to it, uh, particularly the uh, La La Land release, you can you can hear it a little bit. You're like, oh yeah, it's kind of kind of very like a, not not technical, but very. There's something about it that sort of complements the jungle tones. Huh. Mm. It's ghostly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so well, ghostly. It's very ominous. It just sets the tune, and really, like, it has very uh, memorable melodies. It's not that triumphant, you know, the Jurassic Park tune, but it, it's mm. something something just as powerful, but very different. Very, yeah, very. I mean, the Jurassic Park theme only really comes in when they talk about Jurassic Park or, or John Hammond, and even then it's kind of a little bit wistful, like a, like a lost memory or like a, something that's hanging over you. It's not so yeah. big and proud. Exactly. That's a great way to describe it. It's like when, it, when uh, Vince Vaughn, when Nick Van Owen goes into the uh, communications mm. building and sees the original Jurassic Park kind of painting. I love that and shot. You get that. You get that little little motif, the mm-hmm. little throwback to the theme. I love that bit. <laughs> yeah. and then it fades away, mm. and then it's. Uh, I always yeah. like the one as as uh, Nick and uh, sorry uh, Ian and Sarah drive into uh, Jurassic Park San Diego. How that sort of serious. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's so well blended together. Do 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 do. Oh come on, that's so good. It has such. It has such a sense of urgency and texture. And unfortunately, I think that this is something that harkens back to Jurassic World. Is I don't think Jakina has quite captured that sense of urgency or texture. Oh no, not at all. Not, not in the same way. No, no, not. I, I, I don't I really feel much from the Jurassic. Kind of hoping that someone else would be. Not that I don't like Michael Giacchino. I think he's a mm. pretty talented composer. I love it. But I Lost. think Come on, guys. that uh, as this is on, him. His soundtracks have become a lot more boring, um, less exploratory. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, and he's our number one I fan. Think man, now we're just... <laughs> over time, I think he's just shit. <laughs> Uh, really? <laughs> no, I mean, I think that his soundtracks, I think he's doing too many projects every year. I think his soundtracks mm. are kind of getting a little less interesting with uh, each project I that comes out. Ryan and... said something about this a while ago. Like, if anything Giacchino writes for piano or something quite, you but... know, is, is great. But then when it translates to something like the, the Jurassic Park score that should be thicker, you know, full orchestra, really, really dynamic with a thick timbre. It doesn't quite translate so No, well. and you can tell it was probably written on a piano first. Mm. You can tell that he didn't necessarily just, you know, start thinking in his mind of an orchestra. You can tell he started playing around with melodies. Yeah. And these melodies were came sure, from a piano sure. and then were brought to the orchestra. Mm. But um, I think as well with the uh, the Lost World score, it's really, really interesting about it is how hacked up it was. Like when you, when you go into some of the score studies online, there's some really phenomenal ones as well. There's so much of it that was cut and pasted around. The, the original um, track for the roundup sequence, which I think, I can't think what it's called now off the top of my head, is fantastic and it's nowhere in the film because that whole sequence was re-edited in post-production. So how, how was the scene originally edited then? I, I have like, no idea because the, the, none of the timings match. You can't lay the track over, so it must have been so changed. I'm thinking maybe, maybe they had to cut bits out because there was too much CG or who knows. Well, I wonder if there were more character moments that they trimmed down. Like, I wonder if there was like, more like exposition between like, mm. Roland and Ludlow and stuff like that. I think maybe, maybe some of the storyboards you know what, you know, what would have been ideal for the 20th anniversary was if they'd released... Not an extended cut, mm. but all these kind of additional scenes the, that we know they, they yeah. existed. Yeah. I mean, the kind of deleted scenes. When they play it on TV, know they're there. when they play it on TV, they play mm. an extended cut of the Lost World. It is so bizarre that they play the extended cut of the Lost World on TV. Do they still do that? Yeah, though? in the US they do. I think on AMC, anytime they play the Lost World, it is that extended cut with the boardroom scene and I've, I've never life. seen it put back in. I would love to know how it all edits together. And I think the quality of the footage. Like if you get it on like Blu-ray or DVD, I don't think mm. the deleted scene quality is is good. That's rubbish. It's, like, it's, it's standard definition, and I think it's like four point three as well. Yeah, 
Well, guess what? When it's on TV, it's widescreen in HD. Oh, damn it. No way. I am Chris, you rip that for me. <laughs> unless this is my memory, you know, kind of, you know, cleaning up my memory. Like, you know what you I mean? You do drink like, a lot, so... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, but I need to see that. I want to see it. When I wrote up all the deleted scenes for The Lost World in the uh, on Jurassic Outpost, mm. I was going through them and I was like, there were may, way more than I thought. And they filmed all of this, and a lot of it uh, seemingly made it quite far into the... Um, it's edit- it's edited, and the, some of it's scored, I think, purpose. isn't it? Yeah, ex- no, exactly, yeah. There's, mm. there's, like, extended scenes of them just talking about the equipment they bring. Mm. Uh, there's extended trek back to base camp. Uh, obviously, Ludlow injures, injures, injures the, yeah. the T Rex. Was filmed. I think that's a sad um, lot. I mean, I, it's weird because why would Ludlow be really drunk and then suddenly doing this, you know, presentation to his investors? Yeah. Um, but then it, you know, it fills in that. Why is the T Rex there with a broken leg? Because you kind of just assume R J and Roland broke the infant's leg, which is like not in their character. Yeah. Mm. It's a weird one. Mm. That one. Um, there's extended sequences where the gatherers break into the camp, and I think as well, what's all of these have. Uh, photos that that kind of go with it. So there's a photo. I don't know where the photos originated. We finally got that really nice picture of the uh, the bedroom breaking. Yeah, from, that, from Universal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> the bald guy yeah. posing next to the Rex head. <laughs> yeah, just like yeah, we came into the bedroom. There's um, there's a photo of Nick next to a motorcycle. Yeah, because uh, um, apparently they messed. They when they broke into the camp, they fucked shit up. Release all the dinosaurs. They also fucked with in, vehicles. In, interestingly, stuff. in the extended score, that the track that plays over the end of that scene is now called. I think it's called "Spilling Petrol" and something else. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a... <laughs> but it, it, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've written. Um, they hide behind equipment and avoid detection while cutting the fuel lines on the hunters' mm. vehicles. I think so, that's yeah, a sad loss go. because again. It explains why they just don't drive to the village. Because as a yeah. kid, that really bugged me. I was like, "What are they called?" You can still see all the cars in the background. They didn't all blow up. Ah, uh, days walk, maybe more. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> that's not the problem. Couple of hours drive. That's not the problem. What, what is? is? <laughs> what is the problem? Oh man, Velociraptors. <laughs> Velociraptor. <laughs> Come on, Velociraptor. A great that movie. Sucks. Ten out of ten. <laughs> 11 yeah, out of 10. So 11 <laughs> out of 10. Turn it up to 11. But yeah, so that you've got those two scenes on the on the DVD. Mm. Um, but there's so much more. There's extended Malcolm and Hammond talking. Oh, you know, I saw that recently just, in one of the trailers. Like, that's... Um, he makes a joke or something, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. Uh, was it? Uh, it also shows Hammond accessing the satellite infrared maps. Uh, and Ian making a sarcastic remark about sending the National Guard instead of these four lunatics. And who are these four lunatics that you... It's well, you! Uh, <laughs> was it? I did have to get the checkbook to get them there. <laughs> oh. What's the line? Um, <laughs> I always wondered how Sarah got on the island. Um, Helicopter drop in. Para- parachute. In. I think there's a, a line. <laughs> it's a deleted scene. There's a line in the script which says they can't use helicopters or something. I don't know. Maybe she just got the boat. <laughs> but it says engine on the side it's of the chopper. chopper. I don't. Well, I don't, I don't get, get that. It. Why would? I haven't said two. Haven't said two days. You have oh, every time no, we all do the voice break. <laughs> <laughs> two days. I love Richard um, Schiff. Yeah, there, there's a lot of deleted scenes. It's a shame. Mm. And I really was hoping maybe for for whatever reason. Um, they would release some of them. How cool would it be to even in low quality, mm. man? I I take. Oh yeah. I just want to see like they do it in movies. They show you kind of the B roll yeah. stuff. Yeah. Whatever exists. They filmed but didn't make Still, it. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, they, probably uh, a lot of it come doesn't on. exist anymore. No, d- don't say that. Don't pull up my heartstrings in that way, Chris. It's not. He's not wrong. I mean, it probably does exist, but I don't think you, you know Universal don't know where it is. You look at some of the stuff they did for Jurassic World. <laughs> they they just what's Jurassic Park two? <laughs> yeah. I think that was we the funniest thing though. Is them. everyone like immediately commented on those social media shares? Like, what the fuck is Jurassic Park two? And then <laughs> they took they took down the post and then replaced the post a few hours later. Where it's we're sorry, we didn't mean it. We didn't know. <laughs> Yeah. What's the lost world? <laughs> Soon this Come lost on. world will be found and pillaged. Oh, it's, it's just such a good movie. The, the dialogue is so quotable. To get them there. Like so much more than uh, Jurassic Park is. Yeah, it's such a better movie, man. Jurassic Park. Sh- <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god. Are we are we gonna no, pivot? It, it is a in my opinion it's a perfect sequel though. It really Are we is. gonna pivot from being like a, a complete Jurassic fan site to just being a Lost World fan site? Dude, do you know what? If I had more time on my hands I would set up a Lost World fan site dedication <laughs> room. What would we call it though? Site B. In fact, is is that available at <laughs> domain.com? Site B dot com. I don't know, I, I used want it, to I want it it now. Sorna.com, but I let it expire. Do you still uh, you do you own go. open paddock nine? I also had Paddock 9. I think I like that. Oh as my god. As well. <laughs> yeah, domains get pricey the more you own. I used to have a load of, load of them. I used to have a load of Bigfoot domains. <laughs> load of <drafts. laughs> oh, SiteB.com is gone, man. Yeah, do you know what? I had big footage. No, uh, wait, what was it? Wait, hang on. <laughs> Bigfootage.info or something like that. No, it was one of those play on words where. One of those play on domains where the, um, the extension plays into what the, the website's actually called um, I can't remember Site B exists Site B is for sale SiteB.com is a great and brandable <laughs> domain name easy to spell and easy to remember alright <laughs> do they know it's from the lost world <laughs> no <laughs> Site B is for sale make it your own domain alright I'm going to see how much this is I'll submit your offer ah oh, shit to acquire this domain please contact us submit your offer no okay what would be cool? Or SiteB.com. SiteB.site. You can get. Um, did you. SiteB. <laughs> yeah, so someone else. Up. Someone picked up Isla Sorna when I let it expire. Um, did you guys ever see. Um, SiteBabes.com. Do you ever see how the, the village set was used after production for sliders? Oh, yeah. Um, how they changed, they yeah, changed nothing. And they just filmed in it like yeah, it was something. And the engine logos are there and everything. <laughs> that is just. Sliders. That was a weird show, right? Lost World, the Lost World dot com is is gone. Is the Lost World Sorry, site still up? The lo- oh, the Lost World dot com free webmail service is now closed. As announced on twenty sixth of January twenty seventeen, it is with regret that after sixteen years of offering a free webmail service at the Lost World dot com, we <laughs> really we <laughs> had to close the service down. This is due to the company we used to power it seizing provision of that service. What? Did you know about this? No. Is it like, hold on. We are now buying our option, considering our options for the lostworld.com domain name. If you have an interest in buying it, please send an email. Lostworld.com. That... <laughs> it's so bizarre. Ah. I think one of my favorite things is um, Universal keeps renewing JurassicParkExtinction.com. Really? Yeah, They're they, just, that they just renewed it like two months ago. Um, so I really want the lostworld.com. You end up spending a um, ton of money to get that. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much they would charge. Oh, I just I put in lostworld.com and it came up with a picture of like an alpaca or something. Really? Yeah. I got the free webmail Yeah, I, I got what you got, Jack. Oh, I got lostworld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So w- Let's w- pitch together lostworld. and get it. <laughs> Thelostworld.com. I'm going to see how much this is going for. Sorry, this, this isn't really a podcast anymore. We're just talking about no, domain name, fucking buying around. stuff related to the Lost World. So I can get the Lost World dot UK for one forty. Oh, I wonder if you can get the Lost dot World. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on, how much is that? <laughs> oh, the Lost dot World is taken. Come on, right? Come on, the Lost World dot com. What else can What else can we get from this? Uh, they, they might have just the let lost it world expire world. after renewing. What about giantiguanas.com? Look at how much. <laughs> um, the lost world.net's two grand. Ooh. Probably, probably a no from me. Yeah. Dot film domains aren't mainstream yet, are they? You can't really get no. them yet. Uh, Alright, well, we'll have to put this one on hold. Unless lostworld.com. Lostworld.uk is open. Huh. Lost.world. Come on. Oh, it's taken. There's some big Jurassic fans out there, man. Just sitting on all these domains. <laughs> no, what's really funny yeah. is, like, anytime there's a rumor of the title, you go and check the domain, and it'll be, like, some random firm bought it up. Like, Jurassic World Epic is, like, for sale, but bought up by a random domain. Like, basically, they're hoping that the title leaked and that they can go buy it, and then Universal will have to buy it for them for <laughs> big bucks. It's funny how that works. I mean, I guess it's it's like like you with the domain kind of hunting that you do more so to find out 
Nerd. What's official and what's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like companies do it to make profit. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, um, like the people that own DressWorldEpic.com, they own 488 domains. And they live so in Dallas, Texas. Before, so before we um, talk about the volcanic Jurassic World 2 marketing, I just want to mention... Uh, Jen from the Bryce Dallas Howard Network has joined our website as a news reporter and uh, kind of a just as a as a as a voice as a as uh, someone else who won't uh, write articles when uh, when Jack asks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as another person who just doesn't write. Uh, no, she's um she's written some she's written a really cool article already. Um, a Jurassic World character study because obviously we thought it was quite crucial to have people on the website that um, like Jurassic World. Thought that might be people. Person, we thought that might no. be a, a good idea. <laughs> um, no, so she's written an article uh, on Claire Deering. It's kind of a character study, a bit of an opinion piece. So it's worth checking. Yeah, a lot out. of it's people really, really liked it. A lot of people had their own responses to it. Um, it got a decent amount of comments. It's a really well, really well composed article. Definitely worth checking out. And um, I'm sure yeah. that you'll get more from her in the future, like this. Definitely, um, we, we, we're hoping to do more of this kind of mm. thing, more character study, especially when in between news cycles, it gets um, a bit dry. Give Chris's fingers a rest, <laughs> really. Um, but so so check that article out, and obviously check out the Bryce Dallas Howard Network. Jen put in, puts in a lot of work into her into her site, and there is, a, I believe, she's just opened a massive gallery on there full of uh, uh, just images, a stupid amount of images, yeah, high resolution images from from both Jurassic Park and, and other films that Bryce has been in. Um, that's right, she's been in other movies other than Jurassic World. It's it's crazy. Um, Mind check them blown. out. <laughs> so let's talk about volcanoes and Jurassic World 2 and marketing and taglines and uh, volcanoes and, and eruptions. Licensing. And, um, yeah, really, really. and licensing. And licensing. And licensing. Expo. Um, so... Uh, Jurassic World 2 is being promoted pretty heavily by Universal Pictures at the Licensing Expo 2017 in Las Vegas that is being hosted at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, my phone just went off. Um, <laughs> just started ringing. I didn't recognize the number, so I silenced it. Um, <clears throat> Dave. <laughs> Dave. Dave Philly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave Philly. So they're showing oh. some some pretty some pretty cool stuff. Not a lot that's new, if I'm right. So so let's talk about what's. It's pretty much a, at first glance. It's oh great! It's just the same key art mm. from Jurassic World. But but <laughs> the more you look, but the more you look, the more you look, the more you realize that there are a- embers, volcanic a very ash, clear debris, theme. and yeah. so. It, first of all, I think the first thing that I think caught my eye was the life finds a way. Um, tagline, yeah. Tag, tagline, yeah. Like, and it's in big. Yeah, bold. if that's the official movie tagline, I'm so yeah. yeah. I, I love it. I love it. It's never been used before, uh, and uh, and it makes so much sense considering what we believe to be the story, mm. uh, what happens post Jurassic World. So, um, and obviously behind that banner, some glowing embers. Yeah, so there's some glowing embers on that fire. One. And those glowing embers are on every single image, but particularly the pictures of Chris Pratt, the Gallimimus, the Velociraptor, the T-Rex, the Triceratops, the Ankylosaurus. Um, all of those have clear, like, basically, like, mountains and, like, maybe one, like, what looks like a volcano with smoke coming out of it. And behind them, what looks like fire and mm. sparks and lava. And it's just, like... So your eyes may be brought to the old imagery that you've seen before, but when you really pay attention to the background, you're just like, oh, shit. And that's really cool. I think, um, obviously, they're not in full-flow marketing yet, but they've, they've put some clear effort into this. You I love the You get an idea of where the marketing is going to go. Like, I can yeah. just imagine yeah. that those types of backdrops, but with actual real Jurassic World 2 images and actual real Jurassic World 2 logos. I think it's very obvious, though, because that, that key art that exists behind them, it's different for each of the backdrops as well. Each of them have their own slightly different backdrop, and it's never been yeah. used before. And it's definitely, you can tell it's high resolution, and there's a lot of thought put into it. Unlike yeah, that's what's exciting about it. Yeah. Um, so we, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to 
pace around. So in the Las Vegas licensing convention, the expo, sorry, they've got the gyrosphere, Ooh, the best vehicle, <laughs> and they've got some <laughs> velociraptors. Yeah, yeah. From, I'm not sure if these are the... They're the same ones. Yeah, these aren't the ones that were in... I don't think they're the ones that were in London. Oh, yeah, they, they are. are. They're, 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 they're are. the same ones that were on the crate, for sure. Yeah, I yeah. really don't think they, they are. are. They look kind of crappy compared to the ones nope. that were. No, in the they're ones identical. That were in were crappy. No, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's two I, against I one. Images. London. You could compare the poses, water. man. They're exactly the same. London Waterloo. You are wrong, my boy. <laughs> now we're just going to argue about this for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are wrong. It's the wrong font. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least as he's finally yeah, um, the same crappy raptors. I'm looking at them right now. Crap tours. God, it must have been a long time ago, man, that they were in London then, because I remember them being much They were, they were in London, and then they went to Sydney with the exhibition for a bit, I yep. believe. And then I and think then, they were in the mm. States before. I remember them mm. in the States. I don't remember exactly where they were, but I do remember seeing them in I the mean, States. I mean, they might not be the physical same models, but they're the same molds, for sure. I mean, they look like the same paint job. They're definitely yeah. the same molds. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're the same damn models at this point. It wouldn't surprise me if they were. Well... <sighs> There we go. Sorry, Jack. There, there it is. <laughs> well, all right then. I underestimate. I overestimated how good the ones in London were. Um, yeah, but the volcanic stuff is really cool. So, we, I mean, there's a theme to this movie, right? I think it's pretty obvious now that there's a volcano. Yeah. So we and we and we can talk about that. Can... It was speculation at first, hmm. but I mean, there's a volcano behind the raptor. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a volcano in this movie. Yeah. Well, you know what? I did see um, somebody say like, oh. And it's actually kind of made sense. Like, you know, that might be like a giant raging forest fire or the island might be being bombed. And I think that might have been where my mind would have went if it weren't for what Ryan saw on JurassicWorld.com, which was just, mm. he said, it was like an image of a volcano in the world epic in front of it, mm. as in E-P-O-C-H. And and, uh, well, it's, yeah, epoch. There is some concept art from Jurassic World of a volcano With erupting. Volcanoes though, isn't erupting, yep. Yeah, so I, I think I, I think I would have gone there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people went there immediately. It wasn't just, it was even like, as soon as Ryan mentioned that, people kind of started going there with their speculation for the story, and we even had our own speculation article that went up there. And, uh, you know, mm. it, as that speculation has continued to grow, um, I think it's like becoming, it's looking more and more viable, uh, especially now that these images are out there. It's like, oh shit, that probably is like, has something to do with the story. I mean, look at that key art. There's fire and lava erupting around all these dinosaurs mm. and Chris Pratt. Like, if a <laughs> and the is not part of the story, then damn, it's going to be kind of weird. Yeah, and I think it's interesting as well. We've got um, the birthday cake of Bayona, which you kind of threw back to in the article. Mm. Yes. Uh, it's nice red logo. Red seems to be the theme. Yeah, yeah, red logo. And on top of that, I mean, the one thing that even struck stuck out to me a lot more is literally the texture that it is. It looks like when there's lava, you know, where it starts to crust over and crack. Like you oh, you're right. Rim, you know, I didn't see that until just now. That sort of hexagonal... Yeah. Yeah. yeah look, look at that, like on the rim around there. Yeah. That literally is what lava looks like when it begins to crust. When, like, you know, when you said it the first crust. time, I was, I was looking at the top of the cake and I just couldn't see it. And now I'm looking at it again. I'm like, oh, yeah, I see what yeah, you're talking about. And then underneath about. it, it's red, like lava mm. underneath the rock. So, no, I mean, I, I, there's absolutely... There's a volcano in this movie. There's a volcano in this there, movie. There's got to be a damn volcano in this movie. It just <laughs> makes so much sense. I'm going to be kind of. I'm actually going to be really bummed if there isn't. Mm. <laughs> yeah. As 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 a kind of a plot point though, it, it's it's okay. So if you really look into the lore of the islands, there's been a volcano on them the whole time. Yeah. But in the movies, you've never, never seen been it. Referenced. But see, to be fair, they've never seen it. They've never talked about it. It may have been on a map in the distance in the background. But if there's a if if Jurassic world had introduced the idea of a volcano great but it didn't um uh, so if this movie has a big volcano exploding mm. it's gonna be like okay where did that come yeah. from yeah to be fair you know what i mean be, okay to be fair though it could have been a dormant volcano How, no, no, however, no i'm not saying however that. the timing brought... it's like oh jurassic world closed because the indominus rex broke out but even if that didn't happen the island would have been wiped off a few years later due to an eruption yeah that feels a bit forced However, but I don't I tell think you this... volcanoes suddenly become no, they do. active. It's it's a build. No, no, no. There dude. is there is seismic. Come on, we talked about I think this. On it is predictable. I swear, Alex it brought happens. this up. It's very predictable. They would not have built Jurassic World. No, it ha uh, it happens. I mean, there are a lot of um, inactive volcanoes that um, 
occasionally when inactive volcanoes become active again, and that's exactly how it happens sometimes. But I'm pretty sure it's something that they can they can um, uh, <laughs> months in advance that at least know about. But then I guess we would. Mon- months is one thing. I mean, and months. Yeah, might months be, can be the gap this entire this story. Film the other film might be. I'm just I'm just thinking like if they had five islands to well, choose from, why did they choose the one with the volcano? Well, you know. <laughs> to be fair, they're all probably volcanic. But, uh, you know Mount St. Helens, Yeah, right? but there's no evidence of that. There's no evidence of that. I mean, but it just, if, it is, if it is an island chain and one's volcanic, the odds are most of them are volcanic. Um, but, I mean, you well, know... I mean, like Isla is isn't part of... Not necessarily, I mean, is it? uh, Hawaii, away. there's only one... Yeah, Hawaii only has the one volcano. I think there's volcanic Send Jack, areas, sorry, you're doing though. research. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. Come on, think about uh, Mount St. Helens when it interrupted in 1980. When Chris was but a wee boy. I was not alive then. I was very <laughs> True, I don't know. I just, I, it, more so from the science, because none of us really have a clue no. um, <laughs> from the scientific side of it, but um, no, I, it, just, it just seems very jarring. I, I agree that it seems... It's a, a bit, bit of a jump. Worse, it, it totally works. This, the thing is, the movie needs to be careful on how it handles it. But one of my thoughts were, in the novels, they had a uh, geothermal power. Mm. So what if it turns out that actually they did have geothermal power in, you know, during Jurassic World or maybe Jurassic Park, whatnot? I, I always and, assume they did. And so if they had geothermal power, let's say that they are doing some weird experimental power stuff where they're tapped into the, uh, the volcanic network on the island to power the island, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Well, what if they say, oh, well, now that the park's closed and we haven't been there to manage it, it's actually destabilized the island and things are starting to go bad because basically our machinery's mm-hmm. screwing around with things. So, like, maybe it could be, like, accidental, like, basically the idea of, like, you know, chaos effect, like, humans interfered. Guess what? Things went that's wrong. That's kind of cool. Now there's a chain, a chain reaction it. happening. So I can kind of see, like, maybe that's too deep into it. But I could really imagine like geothermal power tapping into that, and then it like slowly. I, I like the idea up. that it is people's fault. It's not just like a, a random act of God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dinosaurs had their chance, sense. and nature selected them to be wiped out by a volcano. Exactly, it comes <laughs> yeah. from that idea of like humans trying to control, exercising mm. their new technology, but not necessarily thinking of the repercussions. It's like sure, while they were there, everything was fine, but they never thought oh, there might be two or three years where they're not managing these systems, they're not managing these facilities, and now, guess what's begun to happen is it's begun to destabilize. And now this semi-active volcanic network, maybe there were some, like, you know, um, gu- you know, geysers, like, in the northern part of the island, you know, some warm spots, etc. Now it's becoming fully active. Maybe this mm. dormant volcano is now going to become an active volcano. It's going to blow its top. And, you know, when you have volcanoes that are dormant and they're completely sealed over, when they blow... It's bad. Chris knows, guys. He's, He's been gonna... there. <laughs> Mount Vesuvius. Chris was there. <laughs> Pompeii, um, guys. Yeah. Never forget. <laughs> but anyhow, if Mount Sebo blows its top, it is going to just. <laughs> do you think it, if 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 it is named in this film, do you think it will be called Mount Sebo? You know, uh, if it's not, then that's just. <laughs> if it's not Mount Sebo, what's Mount Sebo? Then it's. Hashtag it's Jurassic gonna be Park Mount two. Epic, Epoch, <laughs> however you pronounce it. Mm. Um, epic, but it, it it will it will blow and the island will go. I think it's it's gonna blow its load. It's gonna <laughs> blow, yeah. Gonna, it, you've been wanting to say it. You've been tiptoeing around it, Chris. Just come out with it. Oh, Not on man. purpose. It's at gonna first. blow its load. But all after over you the laughed, I realized, and then I really wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the official story of Jurassic World 2, uh, the volcano gets a bit down and dirty <laughs> and wants to uh, blow its load all over the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, I mean, get, pff, what happens next? Chris likes what dinosaurs, do? but Man, volcano loves dinosaurs. Guys. <laughs> we're not even in Philadelphia and this is happening. Mm. It's mm. been a day for it. Didn't Ryan say something earlier where he was like, yeah, that gets me off? <laughs> yeah, it really gets me off. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the come down, isn't it? From the, oh yeah, uh, it is from the Lost World twenty. Uh, mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, off off topic. Well, not off topic. On topic. Another Lost World thing is the uh, the marketing and the merchandising for it was so much. Uh, you know, it really stepped up its game from 
Jurassic Park, like the video games we got and stuff like that. It's crazy. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I'm done. It was it was the uh, it was the silence, and then Chris like what? <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to talk about anything. I was listening, Alex. I was listening. I (laughs) don't you remember everything like playing Warpath and playing the Lost World PSX and even uh, maybe Trespass. You know. You know what? You know. I'll stop you there, Alex. Um, I never played Warpath. Oh what? But I and I still haven't played. Neither have I. But I started looking it up with. uh, I wanted. It's so cool. Searching Stigamolic. Oh wait, are we not saying Stigamolic? You've said, you said it twice now, so I guess, you know, well... Fuck. Um, <laughs> ah, yeah, man. I, but yeah, I, yeah. so I started looking it up. I'm like, oh, wow, I really <laughs> wanted to play this game without knowing that I want... I never played it. That's what I'm getting at. Mm. But it and was it the design of it. The, the look of it was so cool. Like, you, you, even the menus... I think there was a menu uh, set on like in in Jurassic Park, and it was like years later, and the fences are all drooping, and there's just dinosaurs walking around. It was so eerie and so lost world. It was um. Yo, Chris. Next time me and you get together. Yo. Warpath. Dude, I wonder if there's. It's happening. I wonder if anyone's uh, like broke it so you can play it on the PC um, rather than just the PlayStation. Maybe. Probably, but I'm gonna wait. Or, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get that game until I'm we with you. We can buy it. I'm gonna with you get, inside we can buy an old PlayStation. Buy two controllers. Yeah, dude. And I play up. Op- I play up, op- Gen. I play Operation Genesis. I, I played the Lost World on, on PS3, <laughs> okay. I think recently. Wait, does the PS? No, only oh, wait. The PS2 plays PS1 games, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the original PS3 played them. Yeah, really? Yeah, I think did. I have yeah. an original. If you're lucky wait, enough no, to have one, I, I, my my original one. No, I've got a slim. I got the I got the yellow light of death, which is such a shame on my original sixty gig, oh. whatever it was. Well, what we need to do is find a way to play Warpath because I play play the Lost World PSX as well because that's really that's really cool. I mean, all the that's my favorite music game, by Giacchino is excellent in that. Oh like, yeah, I, wait, that one you can get on the PC, right? Don't know, no, no idea. Man. I, I swear that's a PlayStation. I know it's PlayStation, but I think someone hacked it. Like you can get a ROM on the PC. You probably can. Oh, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, And that had those really random sequences in, didn't it? Those those um, animated computer sequences. Oh, dude, don't even. They're all on YouTube. So if you haven't seen them, like look them up because they're so cool. The one with the the Raptors and the one with the T Rex and. I'm literally googling Warpath Jurassic Park ROM. Yeah. Shit. (laughs) Can you get Warpath? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you'd have to find an emulator, but... I mean, this game's so old and it's a PlayStation, I'm pretty sure emulating won't be a problem. Dude, and some of those dude, dinosaur designs are damn good. Mm. Nah, dude, I'm gonna I'm saving that All game right. until I'm sitting in a room with you and I'm gonna we're gonna get a, we're gonna go out and we're gonna get a PlayStation. <laughs> we should go we're bring gonna go a TV and a PlayStation, PlayStation out to a bar and we oh, can throw yeah. down on Warpath. Blue Moons. <laughs> I'm going to throw down some Warpath. But I've never played Warpath. But Alex, back to your original point. Um, yes, the marketing and the games and the toys, everything mm. about that movie was amazing. I remember going to, um, when I was a kid, I went to Legoland, I think, my, with my family. And we went to a shop before or after or something, some supermarket type place. And I remember seeing at the end of the aisle, it was the the green, all the green Lost World mm. stuff. And I just, because uh, I'd never really seen Jurassic Park toys on shelves, because they didn't really, you know, I was too young. I was four when it came out, so I kind of missed that. So I don't know, I must have been about five or six. They probably still would have had some of the toys. Um, I brought the ground tracker, you know, the, yeah. uh, the kind of Mercedes, Kenner's Mercedes. Um, I, I just, it's a fond memory. Just me and, all my, me and my cousins bought like a ground tracker each, and I think it came with a figure, right? I think so, came yeah. With, uh, came with Malcolm? Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I, it was I, I had the green like... ground tracker where then I would always get my Pachycephalosaurus and make it hit the button so the hood would pop off. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I'd always get the thrasher or something to pull out the lights. Oh, uh, yeah. The lights on. thrash and throw. Man, I never had any toys. I feel like I missed out. Go on eBay, man. <laughs> yeah. Go buy some toys. <laughs> Who was it today? Chris likes toys. Who was it today who said, "Come December, we're all going to be broke"? That was oh, that was Jack. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be. Broke. Oh yeah, because you know we're all going to buy it. 
<laughs> we are going to buy all of them. Do you see? Uh, do you guys see Justin shed a, uh, you know, a thing? What? No. Uh-huh. Justin uh, shed. Oh god. <laughs> so confusing. Is this like a thing we can't so talk tired, about? Or? Man. No, no, no. Justin shared a, a thing. What's the word? A picture. <laughs> That's the one. Um, of uh, Lost World marketing, very early marketing. Oh marketing yes, that, that teaser poster. Mm. The teaser poster for Lost World. Thank you, Chris. Um, sorry, guys. I'm tired. Apologies for this podcast. But it's uh, it's like it's a completely pre any key art for the Lost World. This is like oh, yeah, brown yeah, yeah, yeah. compies. I'm with you. In this, in the su- setting sun with yeah, uh, like green I really mountains, dug that. and it says the greatest success story in motion picture history is about to get even bigger. And there's not even any logo. There's no hashtag Jurassic Park two. It just it's just that text. Yeah, I really, that. really like because that. People um, knew, um, like they knew what what it was, didn't they? Like from yeah. the font, from the style. It was... I was actually just looking at that. And I was like, man, I would like to see like a more modern one like that. Mm. But like, imagine that with like Jurassic World two, like the same idea and orange, beautiful sunset, green jungle, some dinosaurs in the foreground, but maybe one at like there's one mountain top with some smoke pl- pluming out of it, and yeah, in you know just modern sensibilities, you know. That looks a little too like you can tell it's a bunch of composite layers. For the time, it was good, but now you can really like blend it all together. But I'm like, man, I want someone needs to make that again for Jurassic World two, or at least the rumored plot in Jurassic World two. Which I mean, it's dude, it's gotta be. Why else would it be on the key art? Why else would there have been a volcano on the website? It's gotta. Be. There's definitely a volcano in this movie. Um, I think what's going to be difficult as well. If we go back to the volcano. I'm just sorry. I just clicked on the picture of Justin as a teenager. Oh my god, one. yes. <laughs> you guys see that? One? <laughs> 20, year, 20 years old, young Justin. Wearing a Pepsi uh, t-shirt. an XD teenager. <laughs> wearing a Pepsi t-shirt and looking very angry, but also very happy at the Lost World. Stunning. Actually, he, I don't think that's like... what he went to see, man. I think he went to see whatever that is on the right. The blonde leading the blonde. What film is that? Uh, I have no idea. It looks like Phoebe from Friends. Yeah, it does, oh, doesn't yeah, it? Oh, yeah, it does. And then, is that Titanic poster next to the Lost World? No, that's Volcano. No, wait, never mind. That's not even how I spell it. Wait, that's, that's Volcano? Volcano? Yeah. volcano. Oh. Oh. That's like Justin, what have you uncovered? Wow, you know what's really funny? What have you uncovered? Everyone's talking about uh, Jurassic World 2 and um, how it's similar to uh, The Lost World. And maybe someone just saw that poster next to The Lost World and was like, I've got an idea for Jurassic <laughs> World 2. Man, oh, that's man. interesting. Uh, why did I think it was Titanic? Like, literally, what about No, because it does, it does look like the... the... <laughs> I was going to say, when you said to the <laughs> like, guy, I was like, I how? literally can't spell. <laughs> God, I'm tired, guys. I can, I can understand how for a split second that O does look like a C, and... Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what made me... Th- but like, not the... uh, Comment if you know what the movie on the right is, though. I'm curious what the blonde leading the blonde we is. We could look it up, but I really don't want to. No, 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 I, I want to see somebody's I comment. I think that is Phoebe, because it's like at the bottom, that. you can just see the, the end of her name, Lisa Kudrow. Yeah, that's right. Damn. Nice, nice. Wow. I did not nice. know... Nice, nice work. I did not know um, her name. That's, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm looking at... So, we have... We're part of, like, multiple chats and everything like that, and I, there's just one chat that's going nuts right now, and I guess because it's... An airport that Jurassic World 2 is filming at, like, the airport themselves, like, the official channel posted pictures of filming Jurassic World 2, and there's a picture of the cast, and it just kind of threw me for a spin there, so I'm like, I was just kind of looking at this, and it had me a little bit distracted. Um, Where's this, Chris? Yeah, hold up, I'll send it to you in group chat number 27. Um, The best chat. The best chat, the one that is orange. It is orange, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank um, you, there Chris. You oh, yeah. yeah. So this is like, from an official channel also, so like, I don't really think this counts as leaked photographs when you have a, like, you know, nobody would, com- nobody would complain if, like, Southwest Airlines shared pictures of Jurassic World 2 that they were partaking in, so... This so you might... think they're filming, like, on, on, on a light aircraft, maybe? You know, it might not even have anything to do with the planes that are there, which is kind of funny. Like, you look at it, you're like, oh, shit, they're filming I, planes. I don't know, you and, look at how that's set up. with the. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're filming with planes, to be honest with you. In fact, the, the lighting rig is over a plane. <laughs> yeah, it, they're filming with planes. I was trying to downplay that it showed filming with planes. I Guys, there's a plane in this film. I, oh, my God. Spoilers. 
There's a plane on an airfield. <laughs> Guys, can you stop spoiling the movie, please? No, I mean, I, to- I totally please. get it that there are some things out there that you don't want to see. And yeah, you actually don't yeah, want to yeah. see it unsolicited. Um, but, I mean, this is coming from more of an official channel. So, I mean, I'm thinking that this might be worth throwing up on the website. I mean, these films are set on islands. So, I mean, they've got to get to these islands. So, I guess a plane or, I don't know, maybe Dude, a boat I mean, would be a logical way of getting there. Think but. of Jurassic Park, like the scenes in Montana or et cetera. Like someone would see a picture and be like, oh shit, action's going down in the desert, a helicopter's landing, what is going on? Meanwhile, it's just, it's how John Hammond shows up. Like you might see this and be like, oh my god, what is happening, what is happening? And meanwhile, it might be a scene where somebody's grabbing lunch next to an airport, like as planes take off in the background. Like, mm. you know, I'm not saying that's what it is. Wouldn't that be disappointing? <laughs> it I don't know. But, well, without context, but it's yeah, hard it, to... It's clearly it, you don't really know. But, um, Smith. Yeah, that's why you've got to take everything with a pinch of salt, though. And I think that's a good way, good place for us to kind of summarise all of these leaks um, and uh, kind of, you know, finish the podcast on a high and talk about the best in the franchise. Um, but before we do that, um, there are a lot of leaks out there. Uh, uh, and it's difficult with Twitter and stuff to turn away from them, but I think the best bet is to just try, try and be, try and be careful about what you retweet. Yeah, be careful about mm. yeah what you retweet. And also, there are there's a multitude of different levels of a leak. There is a picture of you could be standing in front of something called Lockwood Manor, and you just might be standing in front of the gate, and you take a picture of your family. That I think is a little bit, you know, more understandable than say cage dinosaurs etc you know what I mean like I think there is a certain level but also realize especially if something's in the public be aware of what your followers it really is you know it's are. there and they're not trying to hide that yeah. from anybody uh, they're filming in a public place so you're gonna see it uh, the stuff that's really secret they're not gonna show in a f- public place I mean uh, and that's the stuff if you receive an image or something you know that's where we filter it yeah we choose whether or not to post something like that if you receive something that is a huge spoiler think about how you may ruin the movie mm. for somebody else yeah exactly uh, and think about it from your own perspective you've seen this now and it's like okay I'm going to go into the movie and I'm going to know that um, or, or even plot so, details whether or not they're confirmed or not uh, just don't don't post them uh, and I think the biggest thing though is don't talk about not posting plot details also because that's just going to make other people go looking for plot details etc and you have the full Streisand effect, and that, that's happened numerous times with Jurassic World and leaks. You know, whether it's images or details, etc., and just it, it it causes more harm than good because what was originally flying underneath the radar now immediately everyone wants to now go see like, oh, what am I missing? Yeah, yeah. send me it, send me it, yeah. send me a PM. And then it's just like, so, oh god, <laughs> yeah. it just, it's a domino effect. It really, mm. it, 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 yeah. It, and I think, but it's fine if if people want to discuss leaks, if people want to chat leaks and read leaks and spoilers, that's absolutely fine. Like you know, I mean, there's a big difference we've all, between we've all wanted to at some point, but it's the sharing it. It's you just have to. I think there's a big difference. Have to be a little bit careful also about. from somebody who's working on the movie and joins a forum and tells the plot, or somebody who's walking by a set and snaps a photo and says, "Look at this picture I took. How cool!" I think there's a very big difference between someone like. And this is how this scene plays out, and this is what happens. Like shit, I don't want to know that. Like, don't leak that. If you're, if, I do like going on and seeing like, oh, someone in the UK took this photo of this set. I think that's cool. Do I want to share it uh, unsolicited to other people? No. Uh, do I want like you know if there's like oh I worked on the movie and I took this photo behind closed doors? It's like, dude, I'm that's cool that I could see that, but you're trying to share this with the public. Like, don't do that. That that's mm. screwed up. Like, and I think that there's certain levels with that type of thing that you've really got to you've got to be aware of I think it's um, surprising as well how leaks can still affect the shape of the movie like I think things changed with Jurassic World because of leaks yeah Diabolus I mean, Rex yeah the whole D-Rex the, uh, Diabolus uh, yeah I'm, although there was we heard uh, a report from the set that they had a, a multitude of different names mm. um that they were floating around and that it, it was they were always going to tell the crew one name and then use another yeah um, I, I don't know. They had, well, they had would make trademarks sense. on Diabolus. So I don't think that they were just... I don't think it was a code name, because what the hell well, does Diabolus tell you? It appears you in the film still, doesn't it? Like, the tracking yeah, crew is still... And I think sometimes... People have told me, if you watch um, when Chris Pratt first says Indominus, it looks like he's mouthing something completely different, like it was dubbed afterwards. 
Is that yeah. right? I don't know if it actually was, but people say they can see it. <laughs> That's too funny. That's I think the the thing that always bothered me about Jurassic World was they had that cool line in the um, trailer that was like when they're walking up the steps. It's like uh, oh. they're dinosaurs. Wow, enough! And then in it's the such movie, a bad take. The they use such the a bland take. Is so of it. bad. What happened there? They're dinosaurs. Well, enough. Wow, yeah. enough. Like exactly. Like he had the. Like he's feeding like, her the line. Yeah. Like when I don't know why they use that take in the movie. But yeah, but in the trailer, he really says it with emotion. Like they're dinosaurs. Wow, enough in the movie. Dinosaurs. Wow, enough. Like it doesn't sound like he believes it in the uh, in the movie. But the trailer. Yeah, cuts, it's, he really... it's it's like they used a bad take by accident or something. I, yeah, funny. I'm wondering if maybe the rest of that take was really bad. So while the reading sounded good, the rest of it just wasn't there. So who I don't know. Well, I mean, why was it in the trailer? I don't. I mean, there were a few alternate takes, like when Chris Pratt skids to a stop and rolls underneath the vehicle. There yeah, was an that's alternate take right, in the right, right, trailers, that and I think it looked cooler in the trailer, in my opinion. But maybe the cut was too jarring or something. So what know. we're saying is, the people who edited the trailers did a better job than the people who edited the film. Oh God! Don't don't tell them that. Then you'll have Suicide Squad happen again, where apparently <laughs> the trailer company edited the final cut of the film to make it more like the trailers. No, I think the trailers kind of suck, to be honest, for Jurassic World, which is really yeah, I such a bummer that. because like you had the Jurassic World trailer come out, and you're like, wow, that was kind of bland and boring, and then you had the uh, the trailer for Star Wars Episode Seven come out, and you're just like, holy shit, that was good. And then, like, even more so, you're like, damn, give Dress Girl to the Star Wars people, because that was a great trailer. Between the music, the editing, the pacing, not showing too much, but really getting you invested in, like, what the hell is happening. Uh, it was just on a uh, whole... The Star Wars marketing was so confident, and the Jurassic World marketing was so like, oh, we don't know how to market this. We don't think people want to see this, so let's just market it like a big-budget Hollywood blockbuster and not like a Jurassic Park movie. Let's show them all the craziness... Well, that's what it was, though, really, wasn't it? I think there were yeah. elements in Jurassic World that were more confident than your typical blockbuster, but I do think it was a very watered-down Jurassic Park movie. I think that it was afraid to be a Jurassic Park movie. It had a lot of uh, elements that <clears throat> it was quite Hollywood. But I think in terms of other Hollywood blockbusters, it was still a cut above the rest for a lot of them on the market, but nowhere near like Star Wars. Star Wars was allowed to be a Star Wars movie, and it was beautiful for it. Um, in terms of story, in terms of cinematography, in terms of editing, in terms of just casting, in terms of effects, in terms of music, everything about mm. it was phenomenal. Um, but let's but let's bring it back away from the Jurassic World talk for a second. But I like Jurassic World. Like, That's... don't get me wrong. I criticize it, and when you have just a bubble of just the criticisms, it sounds like I'm bashing on the movie. I think that I like Jurassic World probably more than everyone else here. Though, which is kind of funny because I, I feel like when, but... when the movie first came out, I think I had more bad things to say about it than the rest of you. My bad things haven't changed, but I think people have kind of soured on it, like, in where I kind of stayed consistent. Like, the way that I felt about Jurassic World when I first saw it is still the way I feel about it now. I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed well, what's watching what's funny is that we didn't watch it in Philly, and I, I, have, I hadn't it. watched it. I haven't watched it in over a year. And I was waiting for us in. Philly it would have been fun it. for us to watch um, that movie, but honestly, we didn't even. We watch didn't really it. watch any movies except for Jurassic Park, um, because even when we had when we had movies on in the Airbnb, we, we watched. We, we were watched hanging the Lost on. World twice. <laughs> we kind of okay. You know what? That one night we did watch it. Chris, me and you stayed up it. and quoted it well, together. We, we were just tucked in in a group of people. Everyone's asleep except for you and I, and we're just quoting it. It was a beautiful time. Oh. Yeah. We were like half asleep <laughs> quoting the Lost World. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, oh. Um, now you're John Great Adams. movie. Um, so yeah, let's let, let's bring it back around. So 20 years ago yesterday, not the 19th, <laughs> uh, the Lost World was released in in cinemas and in my opinion became the best sequel. Hey Jack, why are we going to go oh, broke in December? The first movie? Oh, in December. Who knows, man? Who bloody I don't know. You're the one who said that. Why do you think we're going to go broke in December? Who bloody knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who bloody well knows? I don't know. I am very tired. How are you? Oh, I'm beautiful. As always. Especially with this... Final thoughts? Um, I like dinosaurs. Chris likes lying. <laughs> Chris likes lying. Chris likes dinosaurs. What, what next? Yeah, what was the other one? Wasn't I don't know. Was there another one? I think there was. Yeah, there's been loads, man. <laughs> 
Chris likes lying with flies. Personal favourite, yeah. Favorite, as I've expressed a number of times. Well, I tell you, um, 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 go, again, going off topic to go on topic, Jack, we're going to see The Lost World in cinemas for the first time ever. Oh, dude, I was going to ask you about this before. Oh, my God, dude, I'm going to see yeah. you again. <laughs> yes. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> I mean, I closed the article. I had it up. I was ready to talk about mm. it. But this, this is a big so, deal because I've never seen it on the big screen. You've never seen it on the big screen, and I don't think very very few people have probably seen it. Oh no, actually, it probably was released on film. Actually, wasn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, Whoops. probably. Um, so the Prince Charles Cinema. We have talked about this before. But the Prince Charles Chinese Cinema. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> Chinese <laughs> Cinema. I'm so tired. The Chinch. <laughs> The Chinchilla. Prowls <laughs> Prinema. Yeah, yeah. The CPP um, in London will be hosting a double feature of both movies in 35mm. Both movies being the uh, two greatest movies in this franchise, Jurassic Park and The Lost World. Tickets cost £15. I imagine they are probably sold out. Um, I brought them the minute I saw it. Uh, and I think Alex did as well. Are they sold out? Let's, let's see. No, you can totally still buy tickets. What's going on? What's going on, guys? <laughs> um, I'm glad because I actually haven't bought mine yet. <laughs> you just said that, and I shat myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it. like because I was waiting until I'd made up enough time off, so I knew for sure I could come, and I now know for sure I can come. So. Well, then you better. And, right, but on on the topic of the Prince Charles, is this little boutique cinema just off of Leicester Square? And I went last year and saw Groundhog Day on Groundhog Day, and the atmosphere. I mean. People were laughing yeah, and no, this cheering. Is a, this, is, this is where you want to be to see your favourite films. Yeah, this is... I went to... They always show old 35mm or like 70mm prints of movies. Uh, I went there for Tommy Wiseau's... Wiseau, Wiseau's The Room. I met Tommy Wiseau. Oh, I remember... What a strange I fella. remember you telling me about that. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, so they do a screening of The Room and it's some, I think it's something Ben Stiller invented. There's one scene in the movie because he hosts a, a yearly screening in LA of The Room. Ben Stiller? And there's a scene... Why? Yeah, Ben Stiller, yeah. And there's a... I have no idea, man. Because <laughs> um, well, it's a cult movie, huh? I it's am like so a, confused you know, right now. So crap, it's good. But there's a scene where you... There's something to do with spoons. I can't really remember, but you chuck a load of spoons at the It's because every picture in the film ben is of a Stiller spoon, invented. isn't it? That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, something stupid like that. So oh, um, hi, Ben Stiller invented this thing, so the whole crowd throws spoons, and they did it in the in this screening. So, like you said, the atmosphere is mm. insane, and like people are screaming at the movie, and like we were sitting at the back, and I was like, "This is mad, man!" It is such a great. And then place. they did a Q and A. I mean, have you ever been to a, a it marathon? Is a really cool there? Place. I did like a horror sci-fi marathon, and I did not make it through the night, but. Which one did you scream? No, no, it was, what, um, what you say it was horror, like Alien, uh, Invasion Ooh. of the Body Snatchers, Moon, Yeah, they Sunshine. do. they do a series, so they did uh, all the Scream movies before Scream 4 came mm. out, uh, back to back, mm. and it's like, that's the kind of thing, like, if I lived in London, I'd be there. You know, I saw a super early cut of Scream 4 before it was out in theaters with Wes, with, with Wes Craven. Yeah, you met yeah. him, right? Nice guy. It's a shame. I was really sad when he died. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't. He was old, but he wasn't that old. Wasn't that old? Yeah, no, not at all. It was, it was really surprising when I heard that. But uh, yeah, Ew. no, no, it's sad. And Screen Four was good as well as whatever people I say. Can, I really, I really liked it. And wish I, liked the twist. I would have taken notes of the early cut that I saw because there were quite a few differences. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you have to give feedback, yeah. or was it just us? Yeah, I gave feedback. There was one big plot loop, like a, like a. There was something that just did not add up, like a continuity error, and they ended up fixing it. It was something that uh, I mean, I'm sure they caught it themselves, but it was something that, like, when they were talking about it, I had brought up, like, and, like, by the way, this kind of like it was like one character says someone informs them on something, and, but it's someone else, and then I'm assuming that that ended up having to do with like the killer and that person was lying, but it ended up just being a continuity error. And they, anyhow, they fixed it in the final cut of the movie. Mm. But that's about the one thing I remember. I, I do really was, like but... that movie, but I love the series as well. It's such a good series. But yeah, so double feature, Jurassic Park and Lost World. I think there's a lot of people going. Mm. The Jurassic Cast podcast will be there. I'm going to be there. Alex I'll be the guy be in the there. Jurassic Outpost There's a lot team. of people that have tweeted that have said that. I think um, I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, you got to wear I'm a shirt. I'm a shirt for sure. The one that's way too big for, for us. You're not coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. It... Where am I looking? You know that one logo that James was playing around with? Um, sort of for fun. Yeah. That would make a good shirt. Yeah, that would make a good shirt. 
you got to stop talking about things on the podcast that aren't public. <laughs> that, that does, there's no information. People go, oh, that one logo? What's that mean? They'll never know. Or maybe they will if you show Again, I, If you ever listen to a podcast where they talk about something and they don't give you contacts, then you can never find it. Isn't that the most annoying <laughs> thing in the world? Well, if Jack like shows up wearing we a yesterday. shirt with a, like a cool logo, you're welcome. I'm, I mean, I'm listening. Yeah, guys, if, you no want, if you want to find the source of this logo, you got to come all the way to London. And meet me, and meet Alex, and meet a number We're of other fans. Of I was trying to get onto it. There's a number of fans uh, going. Isn't uh, Jurassic Cast podcast is going to be there? I'm trying to find my tweet where people reply. Isn't to is James going. Hawkins going? James Hawkins is going. Yeah. I think uh, there's a number of people so far away. It was so long ago that I posted about it. Um, so long. Farewell. Alvida, say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Come on. I'm tired. That's not where I thought you were going with that. I thought you were going for the dolphin song. <laughs> so um... long it thinks for all the fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Guys, it is so warm in oh, my house. I'm here dying. We here we go. Here we go. Uh, I... Who? Uh, I think Jurassic Collectibles is going. Who? I hope. I really hope Jurassic Collectibles is going. RJ. RJ? He didn't RJ. make it. RJ. He didn't make it. Says Ingen on the side of that chopper. I don't get that. What? Why would, Why would have two, two teams? teams? <laughs> <laughs> two teams. Why would it have two teams? But yeah, teams? anyway, there's a number of fans going. If you're going, tweet us, tweet the outpost, and uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have a meet up or we something. We can go talk go about Jurassic Lost World. Guys are thinking about having some drinks before the movie, which is probably a really, really good before the movie, during the movie, after the movie, movie. and Colin Trevorrow after the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex, we'll meet. We'll meet up before. Oh, you'd be better. Are we going to live stream this? <laughs> you guys oh, you know, it's so sad that I'm not there. You could come. It's going to be great. Let oh, well, me just book my tickets across the seas. It might not be that much. Yeah, come know. and see how expensive it is to come and visit, hey, Chris. when is that event? <laughs> uh, next month. Is it end of the month? 20-something? Yeah, it's 17th, 17th of June. June. Let's make it the next official meetup. Yeah, quickly. Quick. quick. Nick Van Owen. Hey, Nick. Nick Van Owen. How many Nicks do you think are on this island? <laughs> Nicks do you think are on this island? <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> All right, dude. I think yeah, we wrap podcast, it up. Yeah, this podcast. This is a weird podcast. Just been, it's, a... it's been weird. It's just been rambling. But hey, that's episode fifty-four for you guys. If you have seen the Lost World, the Lost World, then you're a heroic human being who understands the best movie, fantastic movie in existence. When you, when you... Yeah, but Aziz has seen the Lost World and he doesn't like it. So he's he no, but when he watched it, yeah. when he watched but Aziz it, Aziz is fired. He, he kind of started coming around to it. He's he like, did. Oh. He and put it on was, twice. And literally, there were times that I could have sworn it was the first time he's ever seen that movie in his life. Because, like, when there's a scene, he's like, wait, wait, boys, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, I remember. And I'm like, wait, Aziz, I'm have you never seen this movie in full? Trip. I don't think he's seen the movie in full. I think that he saw it in full with us. He's like, shit, this movie's actually good. I think all he ever saw before... I think Aziz drifts in I think in all he ever saw before oh, was the, the gymnastic can... scene. We, we gotta wrap this bad boy up, guys. Happy Lost World 20th. Happy. Um, Alex, Chris, it was very mm. nice to speak to you this yes. evening. Um, yes. It is late now. It's oh. midnight. I am oh. I am fading away Wait. into the depths of the work that I have to do before uh-huh. I go. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh well, this was, this, was a, this was a pleasant surprise. This was a joy. A pleasurable. It was nice to have you on, Alex. I'm glad you finally spoke. <laughs> Dude, this is it's just, definitely I get so us. caught up in listening to you guys. Literally, the other night, I was working late. And I just put on an old podcast that was just Chris and Aziz and just listen to that. And it's so pleasant. <laughs> I, I'm I, that's, I've never heard anyone say that listening to me is pleasant. So it is. It's like, just, you guys just talk. There, there well, hang on, hang on. The world for that. And, uh, I, don't think, I don't think there's been a podcast with just Chris and Aziz. I think the last no. one was just Chris and the Aziz. The last one. <laughs> oh, the last one then. Okay. It might have been that. Oh, yeah, the, the sass is Jurassic World 2. You said old one. Yeah, I thought, I like, think... I don't know why I said that. I don't know. The one where <laughs> it's we... Like, technically, it's old now. Yeah, we'll now it is. There's another podcast. There's this podcast. Yeah. I keep forgetting that podcast happened, actually. I, I, was it all right? Was the podcast okay? Yeah, no, no, it was a really, really good one. Um, I cannot remember a single thing you talked about, but I can remember really enjoying <laughs> it. Really good! I don't remember at all. Um, no. You know, it was only... What episode are we on now? 54? Four. It was oh, only... Yeah, shit, we did 50. Yeah, it was 43 that we interviewed Wow, Colin and somehow ended up speaking to Bayonne. Yeah, yeah man, night. I still talk to people. Somebody was asking me the other day. They were like, oh, I want to see this film, um, A Monster Calls. What's, what, what do you think of it? And I was like, well, it's funny you mentioned that because the director and then, you know, going into the full spiel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So random. I just, uh, 
I clicked on the YouTube link and it, our uh, Colin interview has a downvote. <gasps> I mean, who downvotes Colin Trevorrow? Dude, no, it's because probably Chris every single or you one of or our me podcasts, or Aziz. <laughs> every single one of our podcasts yeah. has one downvote. Like somebody clicks and listens to our video just to be like, "Fuck you guys." Fuck these guys! Like People every find... single one <laughs> of them. Great. It took actually. It took a few days for it to hit this one though. Uh, the most recent fifty-three. Oh yeah, yeah. Finally that's got right. the thumbs they down. They do every single video. Oh, it gives us a view anyhow. Even the ones from Philly. That's so nice. Oh. It's a new trend though. It just kind of started like within like the past I don't know two and a half months I think. Yeah. If we, if we don't get the one down vote, it's kind of like I feel like we're missing our one of our. Key but lessons. normally, what's funny <laughs> is that down vote is normally one of the first votes. Like normally, it's like within an hour of our podcast going up. Like there is someone that's just like, "Fuck these guys." They've not Why even they still to it. They've just down voted. <laughs> And I'm just like somebody. Somebody has notifications set up just to be to like, "You guys suck." <laughs> I think it's Aziz, guys. I'm pretty sure <laughs> they're Aziz. trying to tell us something. Aziz, uh, if it is Aziz, then he, yeah, I, I'd imagine it's just he's got to go. It's his way of telling us we need to do better. <laughs> it's uh, you know, it, I just think he's forgotten that he's the site he works for. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I'm gonna download these. I'm gonna downvote these motherfuckers. That's totally something he would do. <laughs> Oh, man. man. Do, Chris, do you remember that episode we had with uh, Nate from Jurassic June and his kids came in and were just like, Brachiosaurus eat <laughs> We were like, yes, they do. <laughs> it became the episode title. Oh, that was a good episode. I, I just clicked on it now. That was a fun I still remember, think... Remember the episode so we, we had a hor- horribly cut down because we started nearly crying with laughter with Brachineers? <laughs> that was the Brachineers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to beat the, oh, the, the podcasts where we were together, though. I mean, that was that was a special time, yes, or, or not, whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you guys. And on that note, guys, we got we got to wrap this up. Look, happy Lost World twentieth, guys. It was really nice to speak to you. Um, enjoy your celebrations. We're pretty much celebrating all year for the Lost World. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think that we've been celebrating the Lost World for like the past twenty podcasts, anyhow. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. And it's not going to no. stop just because it's the 20th Can't doesn't stop. mean it continues to but age. But 25th anniversary movie... for Jurassic Park next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 21st I can't believe how quickly that came around. Like, it feels like it was just the JP's 20th. I know, I know. Time the has been really flying fast everything. lately. Um, I think there's going to be some exciting things next year, but we will keep you posted. If you enjoyed our meetup in Philadelphia, then... Um, Woo, just wait until you see what we got planned next year. And wait till you see. <laughs> we can't <Yeah>. wait either <laughs> to figure that one out. <laughs> wait, are we doing uh, something next year? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, one day. Well, one day. Well, hopefully multiple days. Maybe um, three days. I like ooh. that number three. And keywords. No, Chris, panel, we want more this time. We want seven that. days. No, it's almost, uh, wow, now, now we're just getting a little crazy here. Because we did like five and that wasn't yeah. enough. Oh, well, I meant three days of an official event. We'll, we'll all oh, right, to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, all going to have to, like, go on, like, a road trip for a month together or something like that for us to be satisfied. That would be oh, like, fun. In an RV. That would be so nice. I don't know if we'd ever come yeah, back from it, but it would be a great time. We might die. <laughs> like, Alive. genuinely, we might die, but... It I was... still haven't put on the weight I lost in Philly. <laughs> Well, it was it was funny because we 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 said like the whole time like we didn't really eat. We never we ate. We literally never ate. Pizza. <laughs> we never had we when we went to that, that Ruby first, Tuesdays. Like, five days and like we just and and cake. Drink. Oh god! But even that oh, cake we went to a chill- oh, Don't talk about the cake, Jesus. Yeah, I don't oh, that cake. The cake. That was actually. a gross cake. I, I just blocked it when we were there. I blocked where that cake had been because when I was hungry, I wanted to yeah. have a piece of cake. It but started we, tasting we blocked out. towards the end. It was, it was, it was so just warm, warm all the time. like lukewarm soup. Oh, God. <laughs> but we drank a lot. Oh, my. Guys, lukewarm soup, all right? Let's end it on that. Farewell. Goodbye. Bye?